This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Welcome back to the stage of history. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 28th episode of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. My name is Tom, and I'm joined by not one, not two, but three people from across the globe who are experts when it comes to the uh, the Sega Dreamcast. I'm joined by Caleb, all the way from upstate New York. Caleb, how's it going? Hello, Tom. I'm doing fine. Excellent. You've got the perfect voice for podcasting. I've, I've said that many a time. It's good to hear from you again. It's been a while. I mean, we did the last one together. And uh, yeah, we've got two co-hosts. Joining me from just up the road, actually, in a, a lovely place called Bristol. His name is Mike Phelan. Mike, how are you? Hello, Tom. Not too bad at all. How's it going? Not bad. Not bad. And then joining us from all the way on the other side of the globe is Mr. Ross O'Reilly. Ross. Hello. Good morning, guys. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's seven. It's it was about so it's seven seven fifty four now for me. So I'm I'm slowly waking up. Yeah, yeah. Good night on the whiskey then last night. Or as good as any, I suppose. <laughs> as, as any night sat sat on your todds drinking a bottle of whiskey or so <laughs> can be <laughs> on your own with a bottle of whiskey. Jesus. <laughs> 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 that is the uh, it's just like the, the oh the stereotypical view of like a Dreamcast owner is someone sat in a destroyed <laughs> flat with like a bottle of whiskey and like just PD ROMs on. <laughs> Went for the Dreamcast too, yeah. Yeah. Well anyway, thank you for uh, for tuning in to this episode of the uh, Dream Pod. And uh, we've got quite a lot of stuff to talk about actually, this uh, this episode, because we've been away for a couple of weeks and in the intervening uh, gulf of time there's been quite a lot happening on the old Dreamcast front. Uh, but, you know, as we always do, we'll uh, we'll speak about what we've played and what we've bought. And, and I'm going to start with you, Caleb. I know we spoke last time on the podcast, but what, what have you been doing in the intervening time? Uh, well, yeah, I've been messing around with the um, with the frame grid a little bit, uh, hmm. seeing how the translation works. Uh, been doing a little bit of uh, trying to get my one arcade stick cleaned up. And then where other games... I have been playing the uh, <laughs> Stardew Valley, which holy crap, that game! It's just it, it's just that perfect mix of oh, I just I just need to do this next, and then I'll do this, and then I'll do this, and it's just yeah, boy, that really just scratches an itch I never knew I had. What is that? Sorry, what st- what Stardew Valley? What's that? Uh, it's it's somewhat like Harvest Moon and stuff. The graphics look. Um, Oh, it, they're, it's a 2D style game, so it kind of looks like the older Harvest Moon games a little bit. And it looks like that one game, Terraria. Its graphics kind of look exactly like that. What's uh, that? What, what format are we talking about? It, this is on PC. Oh, okay. it's, actually, it's actually like legit sold like almost a half million copies. And it's like this sleeper hit. It literally just came out like a week ago. And like mm. it came out of freaking nowhere. Just one dude made it. And like he made this like... It looks like a small game, but man, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, and it's just just stupid fun. It's, I'm in a period of my life right now where it's like just holy crap. I you know I really needed to play something simple and uh, you know somewhat calming like that. So it's, it's amazing. What about Dreamcast wise? Anything? Just the frame grid stuff and messing around with fighting games, trying to get my controller fixed. That's pretty much all I've been playing recently. Excellent. Okay. What about you, Mike? I think I'm kind of a bit of a broken record whenever I appear on here because um, I've, I've been playing mostly Fallout 4 again. Oh, get off. Um, get off. It's, uh, it's become a bit of an addiction. I got on to you. <laughs> um, Fallout 4, and, uh, and I did pick up Far Cry Primal on mm. modern consoles, um, which is. So, what, uh, what, are you, what are you on? Are you on PS4 or Xbox One? Both. But oh, but, but oh, wow. I see. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you see. You, you've got to, you've got to, you know, don't put your eggs in one basket. You've got to, you know, have the whole spread. Yeah. Now the now the Xbox One. I mean that thing as a paperweight. It's you know it's amazing. <laughs> I mean it's just it holds down papers and they don't go anywhere no matter how stiff the breeze. <laughs> I'll have nothing said bad against the Xbox One. Forza Six and Forza Horizon Two are are great games. <laughs> Everything else is just pretty much. 
subpar. But anyway, those two are great. Um, so yeah, so it's mainly Far- mainly Fallout Four and and uh, Far Cry Primal, which is an interesting game, I gotta say. But Dreamcast wise, uh, well, the only game I've played in Dreamcast recently has been Crazy Taxi. I've had a bit of a Crazy Taxi addiction the last for a couple of weeks. Yeah, one of those underrated games on the uh, Dreamcast no one's ever heard about. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, yourself, Ross, what about you? Yeah, I've been playing a bit of Zero Gunner 2 on the old arcade cabinet, um, trying to get that 1cc, but um seems like the same with all Psycho games. I can get to the second from last level or last level on one credit, and then it just all goes to shit, and I can't come close to doing it on 1cc at all. So that maybe someday. Anything else on the uh, on the Dreamcast or like... on the Dreamcast? Well, actually, also it was my birthday recently, so my girlfriend. Oh, happy happy birthday! She's thirty years old. Oh dear. But um, yeah, my my girlfriend, um, the great girlfriend that she has, bought me a projector. So on that, I've been playing a bit with Sega and with Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing Transformed. So you've got the projector on the wall then? Yeah, yeah. And our Japanese apartment really doesn't have enough room for it, so we're trying to figure out how to organize stuff. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, great and it's been fun uh, reliving say Sonic and Sega All Stars racing. So have you been like team. have you been like drawing the curtains and like getting the full like? Yeah, I've only been playing it really in the evening, so that's not been a problem. But yeah, I have been drawing the curtains and like, regular games like action adventures stuff. I wouldn't bother so much, but for I don't know. I think it really it's really worth playing something like a racing game. Yeah. Where you can feel the speed. Excellent, cool. Do you um, do you play like any current gen stuff? I mean, do you own a PS4 or an Xbox One? I own a like PS4, that? an Xbox One, and a Wii. And oh, uh, no. I hate them all pretty much equally. <laughs> isn't that weird? Isn't this that weird? Is for, for some reason, I actually have more respect for Ross because he owns all three, <laughs> rather than Mike who only owns two. But I, I don't know. It's it's where does the disdain come from? I think they're all. I. I I think they're all awful. I hate, I really, I really dislike this gen. I, I can't say much good about it. And for the first time ever since since I started gaming when I was like six years old, this is the first gen where my platform of choice is the PC. I've a, I've actually had a Wii U as well. I, Wii U, PS4, and Xbox One. I had launch launch days in all three of them. But I actually sold my Wii U this week huh. because I hadn't played it in a year and a half. Gearing wow. up for that NX, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. That's- Oh, that reminds me, actually, you're talking of Xbox One. There is one game I've been playing recently, uh, recently uh, Raiden 5, the, uh, ah. the new Raiden game that just got released. Uh, a bit of an odd one. It's, a, it's one of the only Japanese-exclusive Xbox One games, <laughs> which may not be a, the best business choice by <laughs> the developers, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a competent shooter. Um, not amazing. I wouldn't tell anyone to like, rush out right now and buy it, but it's pretty good. Excellent. Okay, cool. Um, I'll briefly enlighten you as to what I've been doing. Um, not a massive amount on the Dreamcast. I've been playing on a game called um, Toothcracker, which is the new one from uh, Ben Lancaster. I don't know if you saw that on the on the site. It's uh, the, one of the new Game & Watch style games. It's an indie in game, obviously. He came up to me at the video game market, which we'll talk about later on, and said, here you go, is the new version of uh, the uh, the James & Watch series and uh, yeah i played on a, a bit on that I, i've put an article up on the dreamcast junkyard about it. it's quite fun you know very basic but uh i'm always in awe of people who make their own games because i just haven't got a clue on how to do it so you know i, I have a lot of respect for people who do that the only other game i've been playing on the dreamcast is a game called I, I, i'm gonna murder the title here now because i don't actually know how you pronounce it but it's called noise 2 sa or noise two, sir. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No, this is no. top down. It's a top down indie humor up where all the graphics are like kind of weird vector graphics. It came out in about 2009 or something. I'd never heard of it before, and I got wind of it through the Facebook group, and so I downloaded it onto my SD card reader and played it through Dream Shell, and it's a really really cool top down shoot 'em up and. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Res. Mm. It's fantastic. It it's spelled N O I Z two S A. So if you want to have a look at it, please uh, feel free to. I'll uh, definitely check it out. Um, is is when you say a shmup, what type of shmup? Is it like a rips, like a horizontal vertical, or like a arena shmup, like a geometry wars or something? Or sorry, I've not given the best description. It, the camera is like kind of like you're looking down on it, and it's like vertical up the screen, so it's a vertical shmup. 
And um, you're kind of flying over these like stylized cities where the, the buildings are all made of like vectors. Okay. And the shooting is just in one direction. You cannot, you can't change. No, you can't change. It's not like a two shot. Okay. No, no. You basically hold down the shoot button and you've got like uh, bullets basically come out of the front of your little like geometry style shape. And you've got things that come down the screen from the top, and then you just kind of move side to side. But it's really smooth, really fast, absolutely amazing music, stunning music, and just really, really cool. And it's one of those games that's kind of slipped me by. You know, it's passed me by under the radar totally. Never heard of it up until about two weeks ago. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, one very worth checking out. It's a Noise 2SA. I believe it's how you pronounce it. I'll definitely be giving that a go on my GD room later. My, uh, sorry, my GDMU. I'll put the link in the article below the, the podcast on the Dreamcast Junkyard site so you can go and find that. I also celebrated a birthday last week on uh, Friday. So uh, birthday buddies, high five. Hey, wait, so your birthday is March? It's the 4th. Four, four, four. March oh, the 4th. Wow, okay. And how old are you? I'm now 34 years young. Yeah. 34? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, you look a bit younger than that, to be fair. I thought you were roughly, well, I thought you were the same age as me, maybe even younger. Yeah, a lot of people say I look about 21, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that as a compliment. Elsewhere, I've been playing on the uh, the Vita. I started a new job last week, so I've been playing on the, the Vita on the commute on the train, and I've just been getting myself really into Rainbow Moon. Which is that uh, RPG I spoke to you about, Caleb, on the last podcast? The one with the weird Amiga graphics? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've been really getting into that. It's, it's fantastic. I, I love it. And uh, other than that, Drive Club on the PS4 because it's just amazing. Anyway, let's move on to our first topic. And again, this is one that only I can really talk about because it's only me that went to it. But uh, <laughs> the, vi- <laughs> the video game market. Hey, Tom. Why don't, why don't you have a brief discussion about the event, and uh, why don't you talk about the stuff you picked up there? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, that might be it. interesting. <laughs> That's a good, uh, a good suggestion. Uh, I, yes. for one, would be very interested in, in learning about the T-shirts and all the other materials and whatnot. Oh, yeah, the T-shirt. I definitely want to talk about <laughs> that T-shirt. I'll, I'll dive straight in then. Okay, the video game market was held in Doncaster uh, last weekend. <laughs> and if you don't know where Doncaster is, that's a place in Yorkshire, which is up north. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, wait, there's a town and a pudding? Donca- <laughs> Doncaster oh, pudding? What? What's a- Yorkshire pudding. What's- Oh, Yorkshire pudding. Oh, I see. Right, okay. Yeah, I think Which isn't really a pudding. pudding There's so many things wrong with that sentence. I don't know where to start. Yeah. <laughs> America, everybody. America. <laughs> Hands up while you listen to the podcast. It's America right here, boys. Come on. I know there's 10 of you listening. <laughs> so, yeah, this thing was held in Doncaster in Yorkshire. And it was a massive event held by Retro Collect. And there were thousands of people. I was there representing the Dreamcast Junkyard. I had the... Um, the ultimate collector's guide on sale. We didn't sell that many. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> say how many we did sell, but uh, it was quite a small amount, uh, a, mo- a modest amount, you know. Um, but I think a lot of people were there for the games rather than the literature. That's what I'm going to tell myself anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I did have a bit of a wander around, and I, I met some cool people. I met um, Lewis from uh, Sega Driven. His site is in the the Sega Networks. So he's a really really nice guy. I met some guys from uh, Sonic the Comic Online, which is the continuation of the the original Sonic the Comic. You know, it's, it's been given the go ahead by the guys who wrote the original version of the uh, you know the the physical. Comic, I, I used so. to love that as a kid. I yeah, used to same, read that from, from cover to cover within 30, 40 minutes every time, like straight through. Yeah, yeah, same. One of the guys who was on that dog sold me a, a Lego Dreamcast that he made himself. His name is Steve, so thanks, <laughs> Steve, for that. It was, a, it was, I, I spotted it. I was just like, that is fantastic, you know. And he, he got it out of the little bag and he showed me that the, the, uh, the GD ROM cover lifted up and there was a little lens inside and then. On the side, there was a vent, and on the bottom, there was a little yellow sticker, you know, but made in Lego bricks. I was just like, mate, that's fantastic. The detail is stunning. I'm having that. <laughs> so I got that. I got the T-shirt with the, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the gun, <laughs> the, the Dreamcast light gun, which uh, has some Japanese text on it. And What does that say on it? Look, <laughs> that, can I... Could... Can you pass it here? Let me have a quick look. At there that, you go. Tom. I'm going to pass it over to you now, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that, nice, nice image and graph. What, what's this? M- monochrome. Insatsuyo. For, for, for black and white printing, Tom. Tom, Tom, you bought a bloody t-shirt that says for black and white printing on it. 
Yes, thank what you. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually. I think you're misreading that. He was told it was it was the Japanese word for eternity. <laughs> What's that? No, don't don't get this tattooed on your arm or something. Don't, don't. <laughs> that would be the best <laughs> for black and white printing only. Yeah. So I mean, it shows the um, the light gun in different in different profiles, but above it, according to Ross, it says for black and white printing only, which is a uh, yeah, a quite interesting slogan. I'd love to know the story behind that. How do you reckon it was just taken as a, a photocopy or something? Yeah, it must have just been a photocopy of the the actual designs that had written on them for black and white printing, and <laughs> the guy just photocopied the whole lot and slapped it on the t shirt. That's bizarre. Because the the store I got it from, they told me that it was from the official Sega website. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that they'd stopped selling it a while ago. Okay, we know why. Sega are not, <laughs> are not, do not have a good reputation for communication <laughs> between Japan and Europe and America, so yeah. who knows? Perfect, perfect, like, uh, example of, of that, you know. Other than that, I spoke to a guy called Matt, uh, who runs a, a website called Sega Mags, which specializes in specifically in old magazines, but specifically Sega magazines. And I got a couple of uh, Dreamcast mags from him. I got the uh, the official Dreamcast magazine issue one of the American one. I got Dreamcast monthly. Um, I got the final issue of uh, Dreamcast magazine, the Paragon Publishing one, and uh, a couple of other little bits and pieces. I got the complete set of Total Total Control magazine, which for those people not in the UK who don't know. Total Control was a very short-lived magazine that existed between 1998 and 1999, and only 11 issues actually came out. But um, because of the time that it existed, it was very heavy on the Dreamcast, like news and previews. And the very last, the very last issue was the one that came out in September 99. So it was just at the Dreamcast launch in this country. So it was full of Dreamcast stuff. So it, I mean, it's very relevant to this you know, to this podcast and his website. So I'll be doing uh, some scans and things. And th- there is actually quite a lot of stuff in there that I've never seen before. Even though I used to buy the magazine, it kind of must have passed me by at the time. A lot of previews of things I've never seen or little new snippets that are, you know, worth looking at. So I'll, I'll be uh, putting them up on the on the site at some point in the near future. But yeah, it was a great event. I got to see a lot of, like, you know, friends and people from the industry or the uh, the community even who are you know really respected so it was a uh, it was really cool yeah i take it you guys saw the pictures then on the on the blog or yeah yeah i saw the pictures and I, I heard from a couple of people that the i don't know about merchandise but the games the price of games was ridiculously inflated yeah it was it was a bit hit and miss there was a lot of ple- people who were selling games like who would come with like an ebay kind of mentality but there was you know Obviously, the, the the regulars at these kind of events who had stuff for um, really decent prices, and not only that, but I got to meet Duncan Gutteridge, who did the airbrush art for Sonic Two and a lot of Mega Drive oh, wow. games. Met, met him; uh, he was really cool. Went to sign a, a Sonic Two art print, and uh, also uh, Will Overton, who did all the artwork for N sixty four and um, Super Play magazine. And he's also involved in the ukulele, you know, the new game from the guys who were who did um, Banjo Kazooie. Mm, yeah. So he was he was really was it cool. Kickstarter um, or Indiegogo that one? Kickstarter. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. He was really cool. We we our stalls kind of backed onto each other, so he spent most of the day just like kind of chatting, and it was uh, good just to speak to somebody who had that much like knowledge of the industry. It was uh, yeah, cool. So yeah, good event all round, I must say, and a really successful third annual market for retro collect. So uh, well done to to those guys. Anyway, let's move on to our first proper subject of discussion. Uh, Ross, I believe this is one that you want to talk about. It's the Sega Hard Girls figures. <laughs> I, well, I there's not really much to say. Really, <laughs> I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I did. I say I wanted to talk about it. Yeah. yeah but... Yes. Yes, you did. I can read the email here. Actually, you said. Sorry. Let's I start. Want to let's talk sorry. Sorry. About <clears throat> let's, let's start again. Let me start again. Yes, Tom. The Sega Hard Girls figures are a new line. Uh, <laughs> A new line tied in with the Sega Hard Girls series. God, it's so convoluted and complicated, this this whole franchise, the Sega Hard Girls franchise. I really, it would take me a podcast in itself to explain it all, but basically all you, what you need to know is there's a, a group of anime girls, each based on a, uh, their style and dress and personality is based on a classic Sega console from the past. And yeah, they have an anime series, they have a PS Vita game, lots of merchandise uh, and they've just released well not just released in the last couple of months they've released a set of figures as well and so far the 
the premium set of figures, which is actually the cheaper, the cheaper line. The more expensive ones aren't called the premium. The cheaper ones are called the premium. But anyway, the, they've released two of those so far, the Dreamcast and the Saturn um, version. And uh, just lovely little figures. I mean, how can I explain it? It's about seven inches tall, cute anime girl dressed. She's standing on a Dreamcast and she has um, the orange, same orange dress or very similar orange dress to Ulala. She's wearing a Dreamcast controller on her head. Stupid woman. Stupid woman. That's not what you do with it. I've got to admit here with you, Ross, I've never seen the uh, the anime. It's never really appealed to me. I've, I've seen the images on like social media, but... It's not something that is it in English? Uh, no, it's in it's in Japanese. But um, I, I've got the Japanese Blu-rays. But you can just go onto Google and um, type in. Actually, it's, it's it's better if you if you just Google Sega Hard Girls and you'll see the full name of the anime. It's something like Seha Garu's High School Explanation Point Star or something like that. <clears throat> if you type that into Google with video or stream or something, I'm not condoning legal streaming, but. I've, so I've been told you can watch them online with subtitles. Can I ask you something? I'd like to clear something up here. You, you say it's it's pronounced Seha. With well, no, H. no, the anime series is Seha, and that's short for Sega. Sega the Se from Sega and the Ha from Hard Girls. The anime is called Seha High School or something. Or I've, I've forgotten the yeah, the, the, the franchise is just called Sega, or Sega Hard Girls. Okay, well, that's cleared that one up for me, then. I, I It's done nothing but provide more questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> why is the Genesis, why does the Genesis have, like, a big book and stuff? Is the Genesis, like, a nerd in the series? Oh, this is just too confusing. Yeah, I think she is a nerd, but, I mean, I don't know how that ties in, like, why that's a characteristic been chosen as a characteristic of the Genesis and Mega Drive. I can't tell you. Considering how the uh, Sega Genesis was promoted in my youth, that certainly would not be the case for North America. Is there a 32X girl with like a massive forehead? <laughs> 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 and, like massive teeth and glasses. Like... I, I'm thinking more like the uh, uh, Mad Max Thunderdome like Master Blaster character. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> but it's funny enough, in the game there is a... a uh, uh, which one was it? Sega... Pluto. It was a Sega, there was a Sega Pluto character in the game, which is the unreleased Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't she like make like, one like combo. appearance or something like? In the game, she makes a brief appearance, and she's like she's like all tweaked out, like some ex drug addict, like all tweaky and uh, not making coherent conversations. And when she leaves, the character you play as makes a comment. Well, I, I see why this world, i.e., Sega, went to crap. If, if if she was one of the gods of this world, so it, it's, it's it's quite amusing. Like Sega, a uh, bit tongue in cheek, like laughing at themselves in the current situation that they're in in the history. So it's kind of like Sega Daga in that way, in that respect. Well, it's it's something that um, it intrigues me. I've not watched a single episode yet. They're, they're only like twenty minutes per episode, so you know, just just Google it and have, just watch one, see what you think. I was going to say I, I've been spending all my time on YouTube watching episodes of Sonic Boom. So uh, maybe I should uh, switch to what? But, uh, yes, I do quite like Sonic Boom. Mm. Just me, just me, <laughs> just me. Then <laughs> let's let's change the subject. Right, guys. Next thing we're going to talk about is these uh, these VMU demos and games created by a guy on Instagram. He's got the best name ever. It's a uh, Guacasaurus Mex. I thought the the, uh, the name was probably the best. Solid. Name yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, you won't forget that in a hurry. I take it you guys saw this. This was an article I put up on the Junkyard main site last week. Um, basically, the, the story is that I, I go back to the beginning. My mate Adam, who runs Retro Collect, showed me this thing on his phone on Instagram of this dude who was making new VMU games. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I'd actually forgotten that I had an Instagram account. So I went onto Instagram and then found him and um, looked at his images and discovered that he was making games for the VMU. And he's uh, he's taking not liberties, but he's taking new licenses like stuff like Star Wars, the uh, the Force Awakens, and Deadpool, and even creating his own kind of franchises as well. And just uh, basically knuckling down and creating new stuff for the VMU, which I think is 
fantastic. And his plan is to, once he's got to about 25, put them all onto a, a CD-ROM and release them so that you can download them onto your VMU via your Dreamcast using a Dream Shell. Yeah, I just wanted to, A, get your thoughts on this, and B, what your memories are of using the, the VMU as a gaming system in its own right, really. What do you think about these new these new games? A lot of them are concepts, not actual games, bear that in mind, but he does have plans to turn them into games. I don't know. What do you guys think? Manic Monkeys isn't a fully fleshed game? <laughs> oh, yeah, some some of them are, yes. Uh, Manic Monkeys is, um, but like things like Deadpool and uh, The Force Awakens are like mini games, just like sort of kind of like Tamagotchi style battle are games. They, are they mostly just QTE style games? Respect to Guy, and I definitely want to try them out. But I remember back in the day, in you know, 2000, I got online with the Dreamcast, and I must have downloaded 15 different VMU games and every single one of them, bar Tetris, was a QTE was a QTE title, and that seems to be all there was. I don't, I haven't, I haven't looked too much. I, I don't know what he's doing, but are they QTE games or are they something? I'll go one further than that, Ross. Every single VMU game I've played is shit, <laughs> right? But, but hey, Tetris look, was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Tetris was good. Yeah, that, that was, was the right, one. Yeah. That was the one that wasn't a QTE game. And, and that VMU game from, that you got from uh, Power Stone, where you had to like move a little. Some, plane some of the games included yeah. with Dreamcast software were. Well, they were okay. <laughs> I, I uh, did anybody remember Pinata Pinata Quest from uh, the uh, Skies of Arcadia? No, I didn't play that. I didn't play that. I've still not yeah. put Skies of Arcadia into my Dreamcast, so I've, I'm not. I've not played that one yet. <laughs> but yeah, apparently he's going to make a, like a scrolling beam. Oh well wow! For the uh, VMU, so well, fair play to him. I don't know if you saw the Magic Eight Ball. That's Genius, by the way. Yeah, we basically it's, it's an animated magic eight ball. You just press like the select button or whatever it is, and it it kind of brings up your next prediction. You know, you know, you shake a magic eight ball, and it comes up with a little answer. It, it can answer any question. It's that it's that high tech. It can answer any question. You... <laughs> any question you wow. like. Any question, and and whatever it says, you have to do oh, it. Wow, fantastic! So <laughs> the power of the potato CPU is just unbounded with this uh, new software. But yeah, um, just wanted to go to your like memories of like playing VMU games on this subject. Mine are the fact that I used to put batteries in my VMUs and within about half a day they'd be dead. Yeah. I did it recently actually. I got some I got some batteries recently and I put them in just to see, you know, what I could do with it. And uh, yeah, I took it into work and everyone I was showing it to everybody like, oh everyone was like, oh what's this? What's this? Like, I was like, it's a VMU, you know, look at it, it's great. And like, everyone was like, <laughs> This is amazing. I've never was seen this at your before. new job? <laughs> no, no, it's no, no, okay, no, good. Hey, Tom, I'm gonna give you some unrequested <laughs> advice here. Um, you know, maybe you wanna wait a couple months before you start doing that at your new job. <laughs> you know, just say <laughs> Julie noted, "This is at my old job, though, so it's fine." Did you did you go in when you introduce yourself? Mention, yeah, I'm I'm Tom from a Dreamcast junkyard. From the new <laughs> the new job, the they VMU new... goes off. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to pause the interview for a second. I go feed my chow, and then I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! If only that would be like. Uh, to me, that'd be like so cool to do. But um, no, uh, that was it. This was in my last job, and it, about by about half ten, the battery was dead. So everyone was like, "Oh, have you seen Tom's like little thing? Go and have a look." And I'd be like, "Well, let's have a look." And this is not like a euphemism, by the way. It was like, "Can I have a look at your thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's on my desk, but like it was dead." And I was like, "Yeah, the batteries are already run out." And like, "Oh, oh okay." Bye. And just walked away. Like all the all the new like contacts I could have made. Like even like senior managers were being told about this thing, and they were coming over to look at it. And then they'd get there, and it would be like the battery was dead. And I was like, "Sorry, this is it." But it doesn't do anything because the battery's dead. So <laughs> sorry. Yeah, who would have thought that the the VMU would be a good networking tool? I want to hear about your history with the VMU, though, guys. I, I can my my history is really short. I've I've never played a game on a VMU. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> Next. Next. Okay, Caleb. <laughs> uh, my first thing was the uh, little chibi uh, guys when you're playing Soul Calibur and you have the VMU oh, yeah, and you look cool. out on the screen, there's a little chibi version of the Soul Calibur guys. That was like super cool, even though it served pretty much no purpose. And then the awesome Resident Evil uh, effects on the VMU were great where you could see you know different stuff going on. Not really games, though, that you could take away from the VMU. They're, they're no, kind of no, no. Yeah, the only ones I did was the Tetris one, which we've already said was cool, and then the Pinata Quest, which is actually something you could play to like get items and stuff for the actual games, Guys of Arcadia. 
Oh, I have, I have played one actually. Thinking about it, <laughs> that's like that's how much memory it's, it's made on my uh, in my uh, life. Sega GT, a little okay. sort of driving RPG sort of. Was thing. that a top down thing? Yeah, it, it didn't make much sense. Yeah, yeah. But no, I, I can remember that as yeah. well. Yeah. The the main thing with the VMU is that back in the day, the the battery again, the batteries ran out that quickly that people just didn't bother playing the games. This is really a serious thing for me about VMU batteries because when I got my Dreamcast on launch. The very first, I got the, the MU brand new, of course, and the very first battery that came with it lasted ages. I, I leveled up my chow every day on the train to school as a kid. And I, I got it to 999 in every every stat, just every day, leveling up, leveling up. But then as soon as that gone, that, that battery went, and I replaced them with um, just batteries from the shops. It wouldn't. It wouldn't last more than a few hours. And I've got no idea why. Huh. Well, that sounds like a little bit of a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. It's not a conspiracy. No, they, no, not. you're right. They probably just put like a really good battery in there so yeah, people yeah. would support the thing. You know, so we, we don't need an interjection here from. Uh... <laughs> You know who. We're not going to mention his name. Cool. Okay. Well, that's uh, interesting. It's nice to hear your uh, different thoughts on the uh, the VMU games. I will maintain that most of them are shit, but um, these new ones look quite interesting, so we'll see what uh, what happens with those. Slave, slave uh, is slave. from slave from Goat Store. Yeah, um, guys, just want to take a little bit of a straw poll. Who's pre-ordered yes. it? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have. Yeah, Mike. I pre-ordered oh. one of the eighty-eight limited edition ones. Of course you did. Oh, wow. Mike. Cool. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> I, I was literally, I was literally on the Goat Store. I ended up not pre-ordering it. Okay, you still can if you if you want to. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's to you listening as well. You still can go to Goat Store. Just type it into Google. But um, if you are a pre-orderer... Just be very have... careful. Just yes. be very careful when you're typing that phrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Very careful. Keep, keep spell check on. Um, if you are a pre-orderer of uh, any of... Oh, well, Goat Store's slave, then you will have had a, a message in the last week explaining to you that, uh, that things are going well. If you've not, however, and you're uh, you're interested, then uh, here is the gist of the email. Um, it was a, an email from a guy called Dan Lucen, who is uh, one of the administrators of the Goat Store, and it's basically saying that even though you know a lot of people pre-ordered it like a long time ago and it was due to come out last year, they had a lot of issues, and now they've kind of isolated the. Uh, the bugs in the in the code, and that the game is pretty much re- not not one hundred percent ready to come out, but um, it's nearing completion. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it's it's this and Elysian Shadows for me are like the most interesting games that I'm looking forward to. Mike, what what about yourself? Yes, the, as soon as they released the trailer the last well, it was last year year before, it was, it was amazing. It just looks really really different. I suppose it's it's, it's First person shooter, but sort of not, and it's sort of it just just looks like a real good Dreamcast exclusive. I love how you know how like today, like you get these like retro themed yeah. games that kind of look too, like they look mo- they're not retro because they look too modern. Yeah. It's kind of like that, you know. But on the Dreamcast, I'm just like, I want to see what it looks like on a on a you know through a VGA connection. Do you know what I mean how good can it get? You know, modern. 2015 stroke 16 game development on the Dreamcast. What could it have done? I mean, look at like most of the games I play on the PS4 and the Vita are like retro style games. Like I, I, today, I was playing Broforce. Do you know I mean, and that is a, a pixel art kind of you know shoot 'em up. And I just want to see what a, a 3D pixel art style game on the Dreamcast looks like. Yeah. It's we're so close now. It, <sighs> I'm really looking forward to it. What about you, Ross? What's your thoughts on Slave? I'd echo what you said. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's unique. It's not It's not another... And I, I love Shmup, so one of my favourite genres, but we've had too many of them, and most of the the indie Shmups on, that have been released on Dreamcast 
are not good in my opinion and overpriced. This, this game does look some like that's completely unique, not just on the Dreamcast, but on any form. Of, well, on PC, I'm sure there's some indie game that's similar somewhere, but yeah, so a nice unique concept. The music sounds good. The world they've created sounds good. The whole development uh, delay did leave a bit of a sour taste in my mouth because I don't understand yeah, how. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, I think they should just say nothing and release it when it's ready. But when you start saying this is going to be out next month or in two months, and then it gets delayed for almost another year, it's like, well, what, how how does that happen? Mm. How does a game go from being one month away to a year, and then it and then there's all the fuss about oh, has anyone got a a developer cable for us? We need it to finish it. And it's like what yeah, you didn't have yeah. a if you didn't have a this cable that you need to release the game or port the game or whatever, how could you have only been a month away from development, uh, from releasing it? I think that was because, I think that was because somebody left who had one and then they needed to get another one because they got another mm. developer in. The, the, the main thing that I take away from this whole project is that now that we've got an indie first person mm. shooting up, what, can, what else can come? This opens the door for like more projects in this mold. Because as you say, Ross, all we've actually seen really is 2D kind of like puzzle games, yeah. racing games, schmups. We want something. Th- the, 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 the community is begging for like a 3D game. Yep. I mean, something yeah. that makes use of the, of the Dreamcast hardware. It's a powerful system even now. As far as retro systems go, it's so powerful. It would and be amazing. Something... It would be amazing if somebody released something like the uh, Strafe game. That's the PC uh, kind of like new age quake type game that still kind of looks like the old quake so, something like that would be really great yeah yeah just uh, i mean i know we've got things like hypertension coming in the future yeah it looks amazing we, we did an interview with um the developer a few months ago and uh she is like the person who now is taking over like the, the, the slave like development so you know they're kind of interlinked but um yeah it's nice to see that in the development on the dreamcast is going away from just like the traditional 2d shop yep. And it's going into different genres, you know, and 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 who knows? In a couple of years, you know, we could have been saying this in two thousand and nine. It's now two thousand and sixteen. The system refuses to die. The tools that all these indie developers have got are just getting better and better and better. You know, how long is it going to be before we get like you know a rally game, a driving uh-huh. game? You know, what I mean, it, it's just it's amazing. And and not only that, but with like Elysian Shadows releasing their development kit, we could get even more. Like, you know, adventure games yeah. coming out. You know, it's going to be just fantastic. It's, it's such a bright, a, a vibrant scene you know, at the moment. It's, it's fantastic. Looking at the, the upcoming releases, I think, I think there's only one shmup actually scheduled for release. Is that Ghost Blade 2? Which one's it? It's oh, Redux 2, Redux 2 yeah. So, um, so hmm. there's, there's loads of games coming out. And just looking at the list of them, it's like there's, there's only one shmup, which a couple of years ago you wouldn't have thought would be on the horizon. Um, we've got you know five, six different genres of, of games, which is just I think it says quite a lot about how popular the Dreamcast indie scene is. Yeah, I'm still like I say, I'm still waiting for a driving game to come oh, out, so or, or, a, or a light gun game or something. Do you know what I mean that'd be? That'd I think be there's, a, there's a game on the um, on the iPhone, it might be on the Android as well, called Horizon Chase. I'm not sure if anyone's played it. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's one of my favourite games yeah. this, uh, last year, and I think yeah. that's the kind of game they could, they could probably. Well, I'm not a developer, so I'm saying it's. I'm saying they could do it. Obviously, could we talk about absolutely rubbish? But it was the kind of game which would do so well on on a on the Dreamcast. It's weird, actually. I reviewed it for Retro Collect, and when I reviewed it, I, I and they retweeted. It, I said to him, "So, what about a a Dreamcast yeah. version?" And they, and they just sent me a, a picture back, you know, of a, like a, a winking eye and a sticking yeah. out tongue. Because I think it's, <laughs> I was like, it's, "What? What does that Brazilian? mean?" Is it a Brazilian Brazilian team? I know they're big on Dreamcast, so you never know. Oh, mate, don't even don't even talk about stuff like that. It's going to make me go into like fits of like yeah, there's loads of games like that, loads of like <laughs> modern indie games which would do so well on Dreamcast, like things like I want. Yeah. Yeah. Games, please to come out on Dreamcast. Uh, I love yeah, that game good. so much. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Volgar the Viking yeah. came out of nowhere, where they just had like a full version on yeah, the Dreamcast. That is the best crazy. indie game we've had so far, in my opinion. Volgar the Viking, by far, fantastic game. Also, the hardest. Oh, oh well, definitely, definitely not an easy game. It's so, it's so difficult. Well, it's just it's yeah. just a matter of yeah. playing it over and over and over, same level over and over and over and over again until you've memorized everything that comes. And if you stick at it long yeah. enough, you will get through. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not so much about reactions, it's just about memorising everything that's in the level. Yeah, it reminds me of Ghouls and Ghosts. Yeah, you know, we, yeah constantly. Like, 
it's amazing as well because we've mentioned loads of indie games. We haven't even mentioned Alice Streams Tournament. I know it's not the subject we're talking about, but that's you know that game looks amazing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. April, it's April. Yeah, that is one game I know I got in the ground June. floor because it was actually very reasonably priced with the uh, Kickstarter yeah, donation yeah, uh, first tier there, man. And, and that's one of those games that's been around for like a long time. So like the Bomberman game, the simple version was around back in two thousand and eight or yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I got an email the other day, like from Kickstarter, because I've uh, backed a couple of different projects, and so I just clicked onto it like mindlessly and logged into my account. It was like, oh, you need to update your address for this one that you've bought, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. So and it was, it was Alice Dreams Tournament. So it must be coming in imminently. Uh, June, or, you know, June in, in is the release date. Excellent. Well, I'll keep an eye on that because I'm going to be moving in the next couple of weeks. So um, uh, That is yeah. going to be an amazing game for tournaments, I think. Because everybody already kind of knows the whole Bomberman strategy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to throw like a similar game that's got like new gameplay elements. I'll be trying out with some mates around my house for sure. Is it it's a Max, the max mm-hmm. Players 4? Yeah. I think so. Well, it must be. It's yep. <laughs> Stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Right, guys, let's move on to our next subject. Uh, this is quite interesting, actually. This one was actually sent to me by a, uh, a listener of the podcast and uh, quite a decent guy who's um, been supporting me in the uh, the battle against Sega Europe with the uh, the Dreamcast Ultimate Guide. His name is Sean Robinson. He goes by Sean. I believe it's NZ17 because he's American. I was going to say NZ17, but I don't think that would sound quite right because American pronunciation of our letters is always wrong. Caleb. <laughs> hmm. <Hold on. laughs> why, don't we, why don't we take a look at the gross uh, gross national product of our two countries and see, which, see who's pronouncing things correctly and incorrectly after we consider that. Uh, we'll do that after we finish recording. Uh, yes, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> it's not yeah, my uh, fault I come from a country where everybody sounds like a goddamn bumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been to Dorset, then? Uh. <laughs> or Somerset. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> I'm Gloucestershire, different side. We're the posh side. Right, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, so Sean, thank you for this email. He sent me an email saying that um, Scum VM, which is the uh, emulator for like various PC games like uh, uh, Broken Sword and um, Full Throttle, um, basically like any kind of like 2D point and click game, it's now at version 1.8 for the Dreamcast and supports the following games um, Amazon Gardens of Eden. Uh, Beavis and Butter in Virtual Stupidity, Broken Soul 2.5, Labyrinth of Time, Rex Nebula and the Cosmic Gender Bender, not one I've played myself, uh, Sphinx, uh, The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes, that's uh, The Case of the Rose Tattoo and The Case of the Terrated Scalpel, uh, Zork, The Grand Inquisitor, and Zork Nemesis, The Forbidden Lands. So just to, just to clear, that, that's in addition to the previous games uh, yes 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 that's right yeah um i knew about scum vm i've not personally used it but i know a man who has and his name is caleb now caleb this news was news to you i believe oh yeah no i had completely fallen off the scum vm i had originally used it uh to actually play the original 1994 disc from monkey island on my dreamcast which you can do uh, and I also used it for Goblins and the awesome Sam and Max Hit the Road. Oh, it's a great uh, game. These games are great. Uh, the controller, uh, they also did like a standalone version, which I believe you can still find with a little bit of Googling of uh, Beneath the Steel Sky. I love that game. Oh, that game. oh my God, that's a great game. It's like Blade Runner and Coronation Street. Uh, the, the Scum VM version for the Dreamcast is amazing with that one. Yeah, it, you know, and, and they work really well, honestly. Uh I actually hooked up my mouse and keyboard uh, just so I could have like a little better experience with Monkey Island. Uh, but for example, like the Beneath the Steel Sky actually works great with the controller, and you, you don't really need to have the. And that's a completely free game because it's abandonware. So Caleb, Caleb, just to give people a bit of background knowledge, so you can burn this this emulator to a disc. You can put it into your Dreamcast, and then you can actually swap the disc out and put the PC disc into yeah, the Dreamcast. Yeah, the original 1994 PC uh, CD for uh these games any game that's supported you can just put it in there and it'll boot right up. Do that. that's really wow. well, e- either that or it's very easy just to rip the game files and put them on the cd so you have like a self-booting one mm. where it's like only one disc 
Uh, I know Loom was Abandonware for a while, and that was on an Abandonware website. And even an idiot like me was able to create a disk with ScumVM and just create a self-booting uh, Loom uh, Loom uh, game. I liked your um, your description there, Ross, which was uh, that beneath a steel sky is like Blade Runner crossed with Coronation Street. Yeah, I love I love that game. It's just we don't get many games like that anymore with like distinctive British humor, charm, accents. Like every character in that game has a really has a comical British accent. It's, uh, it was hilarious to play. The only game that I could actually compare that to is one that I mentioned in the last episode of the podcast, which is um, a game called Silver, which yep. has a a lot of like Northern English accents, which I found quite surprising when I first played it. And so that's the only one I can kind of liken Beneath the Steel Sky to, even though they're completely different, same genre but different kind of uh, time period settings. But yeah, it's um, it's interesting that they've updated it and now you can play different games because there are a lot of these games coming to uh, PS4 and Vita in the near future. I think Day, is it Day of the Tentacle is coming soon yes, to the yeah. PS4. So now that you can, you know that you can play these these old games on your Dreamcast just as well. Yeah. Also, too, uh, in case anybody forgot, they're on the DC Evolution site, which actually came back into existence in August 2015 when I thought that amazing site had been gone forever. Uh, they're kind of operating off of SourceForge now and their website relaunched. And back in December, they actually released uh, two CD images for two fan-made games. Uh, one's called Indiana Jones and the Call of Thunder, and the other one is called Open Quest. Cool. Are they like point and click type things? Yep. Yeah, they are. They are basically the same kind of point and click ones. Which uh, led me, uh, but I'll just tell a quick story about this. I was super jazzed about this <laughs> because Open Quest. It said that it was actually converted from AGS to the Dreamcast. Now that that's a big deal because AGS is Adventure Game Studio. It's actually really easy to program an adventure game. And you know it was the same. It was the same uh, version that was, uh, you know, Yahtzee from Zero Punctuation. He created his games, including the amazing Five Days of Stranger. He actually used AGS to make that, and so it's a very simple studio uh, software to use. And I was super jazzed because, like, oh my god! So this might mean that I can use AGS to make a game. And then port it to Scum VM, which I'll be able to just easily create a self-booting disk and just have it run on the Dreamcast. Uh, however, with a little bit more uh, investigation, that's probably not going to happen. The software that apparently was used to transfer it from AGS to a version that Scum VM could use was it's, it's no longer in the original spot. It's supposed to be on the web, uh, and basically, you know the. The scum VM people don't really want to like support stuff like that because it's kind of like a legally gray area. Mm-hmm. Supposedly, you're you're supposed to have the original disc and whatnot to be able to play these games. That's the whole point of it is so people could play their original games on these multiple systems. To be fair, a lot of these games you you actually can still buy on Steam commercially. So yes, yes. And that's the other reason why they're a little bit hesitant to specifically kind of like go after creating games specifically for ScumVM. So yeah, ScumVM basically is just something to help translate existing games uh, that you can legally purchase. It's not really for creating new games. So I kind of hit a brick wall there. There are some like, you know, programming stuff like uh, AGI is one of the uh, studios. It's AGI Studio where you can actually make kind of a game from scratch but it's so much more difficult to do that than use uh adventure game studio so yeah i did a whole big face post uh, facebook post on the dreamcast uh fan site on the uh, facebook so but basically uh yeah so my dreams of creating a really cool adventure game in adventure game studio and having it released on the dreamcast have been squashed but i guess oh. i'll just simply have to wait till falco releases the um, <laughs> elysian <laughs> shadows thing so i'm definitely lo- I'm looking forward studio. to that um, Dream, was it Dream Studio Two, or is it just is it just Dream Studio, Japanese exclusive like RPG maker? Oh yeah, with the one with the the, like, the weird like Lego figures on the front. No, of the I've box. never I've never played it myself. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. If, if you if you've got the patience, patience to spend a few years learning Japanese, then you could make a game that way. Uh, there you go, Caleb. Okay, there's, there's your option. Oh yeah, all I have to do is learn Khan. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing that this raises for me is this. Um, again, I've said this before in other episodes, just how versatile the Dreamcast hardware is and still is now, because we've got things like Scum VM running 
these amazing 2D adventure games. We've got you know indie developers like making whole new games. We've got all the different emulation discs and and ROMs and things running. Sega really didn't know what they had with the Dreamcast, did they? Well, I mean, they it's it's really more about third party publishers taking advantage of it. Uh, yeah, you know? but I mean, I mean, they could have they could have. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say it's like this system lives on now, and uh, we're talking about it in this podcast, and they kind of killed it. Back then, and it's just like well, Dreamcast Two is coming. <laughs> <laughs> what Dreamcast Two? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware there was any official involvement with. No, Sega. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so I guess I guess some coming. I guess some yeah <laughs> multi some multi millionaire is going to buy the license for that. I guess on, on the subject of Dreamcast Two, I saw a, a tweet today where somebody had tweeted out an image of uh, you know them ones of the the, the Dreamcast Two with the like the red the pad with the red underneath. Yeah. But all, but also um, as as well as that, there's kind of like little you know what goes inside a um, a Neo Geo Gold the little mm. like handheld thing, one of them, but with oh, like a Dreamcast swirl on it. So it's like it's, it's all yeah. it's also going to have one of them now as well. It's gonna be great. Did it also yeah. have a Did it also have a picture of the Coleco Chameleon next to that? <laughs> the funny thing is, the Coleco Chameleon is is as much of a joke as it was. It came far closer to becoming a reality when Dreamcast 2 had a little... Uh, no, I think you mean the, uh, the first retro one VGS. they had. Or the VGS. Uh, yeah, the VGS. The VGS, if they would have kept certain people on, it might have actually worked. But no, the the I think the Chameleon was basically just never anything except for a Super Nintendo in a Jaguar case. And then it was also a, uh, <laughs> a video capture card and a clear <laughs> classic shell. Well, the retro That's VGS all that was. was just that was nothing. Jaguar shell, wasn't it? Yeah, but there was actually people behind it that could have created something yeah. had, you know... It, it, things have gone much, much better, but yeah. yeah so a couple of people who were let go from that project earlier on, uh, who so. could have maybe done something. Uh, before we leave the Scum VM discussion, I want to say if anybody uh, wants to try it out, I would say go get yourself a copy of uh, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. That is an amazing game, which uh, you, we're using Scum VM you can get working on your Sega it. Dreamcast. And that's that's a yeah, great, great game. game. I was going to say, is that is that a game or a state of, a state of mind? <laughs> it is a trip. All right, guys, uh, let's move on. Is there anything else anyone else wants to like touch on or... No, I think I think I think that pretty much does it all. It's like you know, oh 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 no! Did, did someone say the word conspiracy? No, oh no! no. Let, me, <laughs> let me tell you something about MK Ultra and the mind controlled slaves. Just to get no, out. they're going to be coming in. The 2016 is the year where a series of random words and numbers. And do you know what those random words and numbers are? Yes, Caleb. they're Turbo Graphic 16. <laughs> Caleb, and guess, get it, guess what get Kanye out. West's new album is going to be titled? <laughs> Turbo Graphic 16. It's not a conspiracy. Caleb! Illuminati! Get out! Is he gone? Jesus. Is he gone? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I blocked the door. Is he gone? Uh, gone. We gotta Locking stop out. saying the word conspiracy. <laughs> he hears it. He thinks he can just come oh, in here anytime he wants. I was actually quite interested to hear his thoughts on the VMU conspiracy. <laughs> no, shut up, bro. He's not going back in. No. Don't let him back in, Caleb. No, I got the door shut. I it's it's eerily silent. Is he taking a dump in your kitchen now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna have a look at that in a bit. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's um, let's draw this one to a close. It's been a, a good episode, interesting and uh, entertaining from my point of view. Anyway, that sounded like the final thought at the end of a cut of nineties cartoon. That's all. <laughs> like at the end of like Jerry Springer, like you know, you see like did Jerry's my final, final thought. thoughts. <laughs> Caleb, go on. Final thoughts. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're all just living together on this big, wide earth. And we need to appreciate the things that we have. And I believe that a lot of us can appreciate what the Dreamcast could do, even though it wasn't completely utilized back in 1999. We can still appreciate it now, in 2016. And looking towards the future, I believe there will be always a place in my cabinet for the Sega Dreamcast. Just as we should keep the fellow uh, mankind a place in all of our hearts. Wow! I'm gonna I'm gonna edit that together with like the crowd and the final thought music. Try to edit out my slurring because I've been fucking drinking all this time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even tell to be honest. Right? Okay. Um, 
So that is uh, that's episode twenty eight of the uh, of the Dream Pod. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we've got a few little bit of housekeeping uh, things that we want to talk about. The first one is that um, we would be very happy if you visited the Twitter page. That's uh, we've changed it. It's at DC Junkyard or the DC Junkyard now. Uh, also the the Facebook group and page. That's uh, Facebook dot com forward slash Dreamcast Junkyard. Yeah, and you can certainly get updates on the amazing, completely unofficial Sega. It's unofficial. The unofficial guide for the uh, Dreamcast. Yes, you can, yeah. Uh, the the main site is uh, the dreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. You can also follow, or follow even, uh, individual members of the Junkyard on Twitter and Facebook and uh, YouTube. Uh, Caleb, you are on YouTube at... Uh, Blandco. Bland Co. Bland Co. I am doing a lot of uh, miniatures uh, things. So if you wanna, if you wanna talk about little plastic men, then uh, you can go to there. <laughs> Though they're miniatures, they're not PVC statues, which uh, you know they have a they have a use in several games and whatnot. So uh, yes, they're not they're not they're not plastic PVC men. The miniatures. So uh, yeah. keep that in mind. Mike, you're on Twitter at space underscore turnip. Space underscore yeah. turnip and uh, Ross, you, you're not on Twitter, but you're on Facebook. No, you can you can follow me in real life. You know. <laughs> yeah, literally it's around the streets of uh, Japan, or it's a big country. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> just look for the only white man. Just follow him. It might not be Ross, but you know, you never know. It could be. Uh, <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Lee C. Yeah, thanks very much for uh, listening to this episode of the Dream Pod. Uh, if you like what you hear, go on iTunes and give us a review. We've been on 24 reviews now for ages on the UK one. I know we've got a few on the US one as well, but it just helps us get like uh, people seeing what we do. So if you like it, then please go give us a review. Do you, do you, are you be careful what you wish for? Do you really want one of my reviews? Please carry on. One star is fine. Two stars is better. Five star would be amazing, but uh, Ross, if you, if you think it's worth one star, <laughs> I, I was joking. I was please, joking. <laughs> I'll give it five stars. I wasn't. Yeah. No, I wasn't. Anyway, thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Dream Pod. Thank you very much for listening, and goodbye. Everybody, say goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Please stop this disc now. 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 now.